Hello, hello! <laughs> Guess who's back? 1966 Triumph Spitfire. Our Mark II is back on video. So, what's going on with her? Now, let me tell you. So, uh, she's my daily driver for the last four summers now. Uh, she's been my daily driver and I don't even know what mileage I put on it. Like, it's a lot. I mean, I drive it everywhere I go in the summer and uh, she's been doing great. Of course, we put some wear and tear on her. Somebody hit her here on the nose. Uh, I think it was like two years ago and the whole bonnet got repainted by the insurance company and uh, there were a few scratches here on the side as well that we fixed the interior is yeah, pretty decent still but there are some issues with it she's pretty dirty <laughs> and uh yeah but recently i uh faced a little problem with her so uh, I didn't have time for, to fix it and she's been sitting here for the last, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks. And now I think I have to fix it before I put her in storage. So I'm going to tell you about the problem right after the intro. So like I said, she has a little issue and before we put her in the storage for the winter we need to fix it so in the spring we are ready to start driving so the problem is with the clutch and i'm not really sure what's going on i'm assuming it's either the clutch plate or the slave cylinder maybe i don't know because like the pedal seems normal it's not spongy or anything but she doesn't disengage i'm grinding gears like crazy and uh, yeah, once I start going, she's going, the clutch is not slipping, it's exactly the opposite, it's not disengaging. Either the slave cylinder moved a little bit and now the road is too short and it's not pushing all the way, but in this case the pedal would be a little bit spongy and it's not, so I'm not sure that this is the problem. The other problem that I'm thinking of is the clutch plate. But I think we changed that clutch plate or maybe the throw out bearing or something. I don't know. So we're going to have to start taking it apart and we will see what we're going to find. Anyways, I decided to shoot a short video again and take you along with me on the little journey. So let's start. First of all, we have to take out the center console with the radio and everything, the transmission cover, and then we're gonna check the clutch sleeve if that's not the problem then we're gonna have to remove the transmission and go from okay. there so the transmission cover is out and now we have access to the sleeve cylinder and unfortunately i don't see any signs of it moving and Actually, I was expecting that because you see this bolt here, that's what's holding it and you can adjust how far in or out it can be. But first of all, I think this is all the way in now. And second, if it moved, if it had moved, I would see here a little mark from where it was like a clean mark. And you see how everything here is started to get corroded from the brake fluid, I guess. So, nope. I don't think the slave is the problem. So we're gonna have to go further. So we're gonna remove the slave cylinder, start removing all these bolts. We're gonna have to disconnect the drive shaft here on this side. Also, I have to look at this because I have a oil leak here. I think it's from the speedometer cable, which is over there. And uh, yeah, because every time I start the car after it's been sitting overnight, I smell a burning transmission fluid and I guess you can see over there where it's dripping. Anyways, let's take it out and inspect the clutch. Well, I came here on the other side and I think I might have found the problem. I don't know if this is the problem, but uh, it is a problem. You see this pin? This is the pivoting pin for the fork for the release bearings. So that doesn't look right to me. Oh, okay, 
now it went all the way in and that's how it was before could that be the problem of course because if the fork doesn't pivot properly of course that would be a problem all right she's back on the ground and let's see if that actually made any difference we're gonna have to do a cold start she hasn't been started in i don't know three four weeks and that's not normal for her so let's see if she is gonna start it needs to pump some fuel Unfortunately, that wasn't the only problem, so we still have to take it out. Oh my god, my heart breaks when I hear that sound. Well, it was worth trying. Anyways, we're back on uh, jack stands and now uh, we're gonna start removing the transmission. Okay, so let me start from here to show you what the situation is. So all these bolts here on the side were removed, the ones underneath too. Over there, there were some that gave me a lot of troubles. This side as well, the starter bolts as well were removed. And from this side, we pulled out the sleeves in it there and you can see all the bolts underneath are removed and now there are only three nuts up there that we need to remove and it's going to be ready to be pulled out also on this side the speedometer cable which by the way i don't think the speedometer cable leaked i think there's something else also at the front i can't tell if it is the transmission seal or the rear engine seal i don't know we will see but something is leaking there as well so let me remove those four nuts and see if we can pull out the transmission Okay, I don't see anything wrong here. The bearing is, I like to make some noise, but it's no play or anything. It travels well. It swivels here on these two pins, which it is supposed to, because if it doesn't swivel, then it would be a problem. When it goes too far, of course it hits, but it, this is how much it travels, you know? doesn't travel more than that so it's wheel as well this pin here at the back we're gonna have to replace anyways because this is ridiculous but these pins are free what's that inside oh that was inside here Okay, good. 
So these are free, the two pins. So everything seems to be good here. Other than the pin, which we're gonna figure out how. <laughs> That's a valve stem, you know? <laughs> anyway. That's what was there, and that's probably what I put back. But I just realized that a valve stem. Anyways, there's a lot of play here, which is not good. So we have two options to drill these holes bigger and put a bigger shaft. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drill the holes bigger, and we're gonna put a bigger shaft there that matches better this hole. And that's one of the things, but as for the leak, I don't see leaks here. So I saw oil dripping from here, so I'm assuming that's my rear seal on the engine. Well, too bad because I'm not changing that right now. And here, let's see what else is leaking. Well, I think after all is the speedometer that's leaking. I changed the seal there before, but it still leaks. It's not from here. See, it's coming from here down. Okay, so we're gonna have to order this seal again and see why it's giving us troubles. Anyway, so that's with the transmission. We're gonna change the oil as well, since we're here, since we have it out. And we're gonna go from there. So let's go pull out the clutch too. I didn't remember if I had the new plate here or I had a used one, but it looks like I have a new plate. And it shouldn't go bad in just two, three years. I don't know how long ago I changed it. So anyways, I'm gonna take out the clutch just to inspect it, but I, I suspect that the transmission is my problem. The, the hole there. I don't see anything wrong with this plate. Like it is nice and and solid and the springs are pretty good. It's a new plate, I'm not changing that. The clutch, the disc, it's gone anyways, it needs no new material. So we're gonna buy a new clutch. I'm just trying to determine if there's anything wrong with it, but the springs are in one piece. I don't see anything wrong with it, but anyways, we're gonna buy a new one. That was the goal for today. The goal was to take it apart and see uh, if we can determine what the problem is. And I think we know enough. Today, of course, it's not the end of this video. You're gonna see more. But there's no time difference for you because you see i told you time flies so yeah it wasn't that much time actually it's only the day after and i have some discoveries here so in the first place the clutch in most motors this six and a half i think is not available right now it's on a back order and you know what i think i can leave with this one it's still it is still usable it's not in a bad condition i think it's gonna last one more season and then i'm gonna change it anyway i have no time to waste it's uh what is it almost october now and i want to drive the car a little bit more and then put it in storage for the winter i don't want to deal with this in the spring when i'm gonna be eager to drive i don't want to have to deal with the broken car first with this here i figured this is a spring or bush or sleeve or i don't know what they call it which goes inside here but the problem is it is broken it's missing half of it so what we're gonna do here is um you know the play is significant like that but I think I'm gonna make a sleeve. I'm just gonna make one out of uh, aluminum maybe. 
and we're gonna put it there. The hodo was a little bit oval, so we're gonna have to drill it, make it round. I don't wanna drill it way too big because I don't wanna make the walls too thin. So we're gonna do that. Here, this hole is pretty big on top, but for whatever reason, the bottom doesn't have so much play. Well, it does play, but it's not as much as I expected. So maybe we'll find a bigger pin. Yeah, let me think about it. So here is what we're gonna do. This is the valve stem that's been used here forever. And I assume it's uh, from Spitfire. And it has a little play here. We have this valve here, I guess. This is a TR6, which is just a little bit thicker stem, and it doesn't go through. So, what we're gonna do, this hole, like we said, this hole is wider at the top, but it tapers underneath, so we're gonna drill it with this size. We're gonna drill the bottom hole with this size, and then I just want them to be concentric, you know? And uh, this, then we're gonna drill this one wider and we're gonna make a sleeve, sleeve for there on the lathe to bring it back to this size all the way, not only the tapered part. And then for here, we're gonna do the same thing. Like we're gonna drill it out just a bit and we're gonna make a small sleeve to fit inside. So that's it, let's find a drill bit with this size. And I know that would be great if I can do it on a mill or something. I, I don't have this luxury, so we're gonna try to drill it with a uh, regular drill by hand. It's 310 tau, and we have a 310 tau drill bit. Hopefully, we can go all the way down, which I'm, um, hmm, I don't know. Not really. I have to go for the other hole from the other side. That might be a problem about con concentricity, but it is what it is. Holy crap. It actually went through. So I might need to, well, it goes in without any play. So that's good. I need to cut this off. Cut it. And it goes right through. It even has a little bit of play here. And a lot of play at the top. So you know what? I'm gonna leave it as it is at the bottom. This play is not so much at the top, like I said. battery oh, that's how the hole becomes tapered right and I have no other option unless I do this within the vice that's a problem we killed the second battery. <laughs> Anyways, so now I don't have a charged battery, which is good. Well, the other one is charging. Let's go and start making the sleeve.
our sleeve fits pretty tight here actually like even here i think there's a little bit of a burr that i didn't clean so it fits pretty well here That's much better, huh? One of the two is done. So next we have to figure out this one, but that's gonna be that's gonna be tomorrow because it's too late now. 